Hi, let's talk about CHOP networks. First of all, what can you use them for? With CHOP networks, you can create animation constraints, procedural animation, and use music to create animation. Now, how can you create one? The easiest way is to go in here, right click and uh, create motion effects, and look, for example, noise. And you'll be presented with this graph. And if we play the animation, you'll see there's been added noise to the movement, to the, to the transform of the object. Now, if for example, I want to modify just uh, one of these axes, I can go in here and in here, uh, I'll just where, where our channel gets created, I can type in ty, make it size of one. And now, if I play the animation, you can see it only jumps up and down on the y axis. So, that's the first way how you can create a, a chop network. Also, if you close this window and you want to get it back, uh, you can either go in here and you see this one, but you lost the 3D view. So what I'll usually do is in here you have this option tear off pane tab copy or alt shift C. So I'll press alt shift C and in here I'll change it change it to motion effects view or alt shift X shift uh, six. So Alt Shift 6 and we're back to our original view and, may, and for this for this noise you can modify it in here so I don't need that one also while we're in this view you notice you have some options in here for example when I play the animation I don't see my uh, time slider so I can activate it in here or you'll have another options in here and so on and it's also good to maybe just open it so while you move it doesn't change and also um, you can toggle what you want to see in the graph with uh, by pressing R and dragging or just pressing this flag so I'll have different well, this this is the same, so not much not, not much difference. But you know, you can you can toggle all the all the channels you want to see by pressing this or holding R R and dragging left mouse button. So now we see we have a combination of those. And also notice some some nodes have these kind of interactive tools, so you can modify it right inside in here and you don't have to use uh, these parameters amplitude so that's very handy good and uh, here's another quick way how you can create some uh, chop networks uh, with constraints so you go to this animation tab and if you don't see it just add it with, okay it's, it's a shelf so um, you can add it in here ha huh. it's tricky so in here and uh, I'll just quickly create a null because I'm gonna create a look at constraint and I need a, another object for that so I'm gonna click the look at now select look at object to create look at constraint which is this one press enter look at object we don't have any lookup object so I'm just gonna press enter and now I can uh, just swap the axis and uh, now we have created a uh, look at constraint so if I go in here just grab this one you can see our rubber toy is looking at uh, the null And one thing to note here is that the 
when I created it this way, adding motion effects, the chop network was added in this uh, object content context. So here's the noise and the motion effects. It has just a different name in, in here. It's constraints, but it's chop network. It's you can name it any way you want. And uh, the so this is the first option we created by right clicking. And uh, notice that the look at constraint was created inside the object. So that's that's a little difference to note here. Also, you can uh, quickly deactivate it if you go constraints if you go in here and uncheck it and notice now it isn't look at, looking anymore at uh, this null object if I turn it on it works again good now let's look at a simple example so I have this uh, rubber toy and I have a wave in here I've modified the decay rate, uh, the ramp slope, and maybe some other parameters, but I get uh, this kind of um, animation curve. And also I have inside the objects, I have my uh, look at constraint. So when I play the animation, it looks something like this. Good. So uh, now, okay. So the basic thing you can do is uh, change just these parameters, and now you work basically as with any other uh, context, graph context in in Houdini. So let's say I want to add some noise in here. So I'm just gonna use this uh, math node. It's set to add. I can select any operation I want to for example now I want to add and uh, I want to add this uh, this noise which by itself looks something like this so if I combine these two channels this channel and this channel I get this green one so let me just uh, adjust it a little bit roughness maybe less roughness so you can uh, somewhat uh, distort the original curve so there's more noise in the movement okay good maybe maybe just so we see it a little bit better adjust the roughness Oh, you can see now it flies up and down and uh, okay now another cool node is the limit node so with this I can basically clip off parts I don't want to so if I have something like this curve let's say in this part it just goes up and up and let's say I don't want to go it so so high so uh, let's say in this point I'm gonna clip it so it no longer goes up so all you need to do is just uh, look at all the nodes and uh, and learn how to use them but basically it works like any other Houdini context so important nodes you might might find useful are uh, these uh, fetch fetch channels. All, all these you can use to some import uh, data in the chop network. So it's uh, fetch channels or creating a channel or uh, getting world space positions and this kind of data. So these are important for getting information into the network and you can use this one for exporting data out of the network 
Now we need to talk about exporting data out of the network. If you have just one chop network, it's easy. Just use this one, this export flag, and it's like the final, final export, and you don't have to care too much. So for example, I have uh, this, this kind of uh, animation and this kind of animation in here. So now I'm using the first one this green one and if I want to change it to the red one let's go in here click this one and now you see I'm using the red one so that was easy just using this export flag now things get a little bit more complicated if you have multiple uh, chop networks so for example I have this uh, this uh, like uh, wave sinus animation in here in the motion effects and I also have these constraints, uh, this look at constraint. So I have uh, two chop networks that are affecting my animation. Now, and uh, if if this export flag is like the final final animation that gets exported in here and overrides the the animation. As you can see, which is indicated with this uh, uh, yellowish, orangish square, then uh, this one is like the final for just just this uh, one network. So this is like the final export for this one network, and this one is like the final final for all the animation. Let me show you what I mean by that. So, for example, if I go uh, inside my object into the constraint chop network and here's my look at and uh, now you can see this is what my animation look, looks like maybe I'll just go back and turn off this one so so now you can see we have this animation the look at constraint works and uh, the, the object jumps up, up and down but what happens if I put this in here? I turned off my look at constraints. Look at constraint. Because it's the export is set to this node, which is at the beginning where nothing happens. So that's why that's why I don't get my look at constraint. If I click in here, it works again. Now if I if if I um, press this one, you see I get a prompt. Uh, like I need this. This can be this export flag can be only one, so I need to unexport the other one. And then this prompt is asking me which one I want to unexport. So I want to unexport the previous one and just have this one. And I can see my previous this motion effects wave doesn't work anymore. And because I don't have any animation in here or on this object, I don't see animation at all. But if I go outside, select the null, you can see my look at still works because I am exporting this look at node. This is my final final node. So if I want to have the other one working, to uncheck this one, leave this as the final output of this network, go back outside to the motion effects network and now it should work but uh, sometimes what can happen is your animation gets uh, stuck or I don't know cache problem or I don't know what but it doesn't refresh so what I found that helps is sometimes when I just uh, change this and it gets refreshed and it works again and I can press undo maybe just stop the animation undo and, um, and it works again so remember if this happens uh, sometimes you need to move some parameter 
or I could go outside and uh, move this one and put it back in and the animation and everything will get refreshed and it will work. The last thing I want to mention is the scope. So many nodes have this, uh, this common tab and in this common tab you can find a scope. And what this does is you can limit the effect to just, uh, just some channels. So, for example, I have uh, this uh, noise applied to my transform and in here I'm creating a limit. So now you can see the, the toy moves only in this limited area because I clipped it. But what if I want to affect only or I don't want to affect other axes? So I can use this scope and for example I want to have this clipping only on the X axis. So what I can do is just select this one and now you can see the toy moves up and down but at, in the X axis it, uh, it stays limited to, to the area I set in here. If I disable it I can see it moves all over the place again. If I enable it, you can see it is limited to to the area which I selected, thanks to the the scope uh, parameter. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope this one will help you get started with chops because they are very very useful. So take care and see you in the next one.